All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Honest Purple's Lando Junk Mod, which is being made by forum user Purple Ivan. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a fun little collection of junk spacecraft parts. And I don't know why, but these sorts of mods, we've, we've seen a couple of them pop up, and they always amuse me tremendously. So let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building. Building and have a look at what we do get. Now let's grab ourselves a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison's sake, get a little zoom in, and then turn on our mod filter, just leaving on Honest Purple's Lando Junk. And take a look at our first part here, the CRT 200 Little Thinker. And this is an unmanned command pod that is a crate. Not just any crate but a banana company crate, Wholesale Banana Co. That's just had some electronics shoved into it and is now an unmanned command pod with, of course, a built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, and 10 electric charge. So a perfectly serviceable little unmanned command pod that is super cheap. That's part of the sort of theme of this mod besides being amusing junk parts they're all extraordinarily cheap so if you are playing a budget career mode playthrough there you go parts you may not care to lose and then we have the pod uno command pod which is an actual you know manned command pod with a crew capacity of one minimum of one to operate a built-in data transmitter lifting surface reaction wheel the typical crew report 50 electric charge and 10 monopropellant and i i love it it's basically a recycled command pod with some bolts and a a cabinet door and some duct tape holding it together. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Now it does use the same interior view as the Mark I command pod, basically as a placeholder and so that you have something rather than an ominous black void. And uh, I really hope that perhaps we get a custom one down the road, but for now at least having the placeholder is good. But yeah, I really, really hope we get an amusing junky interior at some point. That would be hilarious. Now, next, of course, we need to move into the fuel tank category, where we have our first fuel tank here, the BR-200 fuel tank holding 180 liquid fuel and 220 oxidizer. And it is an oil drum. There you are. Flammable liquid. Says it all. Now, if you need more fuel, there is the BR-400 with 360 liquid fuel and 440 on the oxidizer, and it is literally just two of them bolted together. And there you go, you have twice the fuel capacity now with oil drums. It's wonderful. And then we have a small TR200 fuel tank with 27 liquid fuel and 33 oxidizer, which is a tire full of fuel. And what amused me when I was looking at the, uh, the texturing for it, apparently the brand is Curbier. There you go. Curbier tires <laughs> for all of your apparently jerry-rigged impromptu fuel needs. Wonderful. I love it. And then in the engines, we only have one, the Rock T30 Crossed Fingers, which uh, I love the name, I love the model. I definitely love on the texturing on this unserviceable scrap quality control right there. And of course, the whole thing being held together with duct tape. Now, it's actually a surprisingly good little engine, producing 240 kilonewtons of thrust max in vacuum with 310 on the ISP, using liquid fuel and oxidizer, and of course, even producing some electric charge with an alternator. So all in all, a pretty nice little engine. It just looks like it's seen much, much better days. Now, uh, moving on, we sadly have nothing in command and control, structural, coupling, uh, payload, aerodynamics, ground, and thermal, but in electric we have two items. The first being a recycled uh, Sony 100 photovoltaic panel, which is just a nice little solar panel with a chunk taken out of it. Hey, you know what? It's used, so it's gotta go somewhere. And then we also have the Spud 100 organic battery holding a hundred electric charge and it's a battery made from a potato and that amuses me and hey it's organic so woo question mark 
<laughs> now, unfortunately, we have nothing in communication or science, but in utility, we have the last two parts. The first of here being the BSK parachute, which is just, you know, a normal parachute. It functions just like any other, but it's a cone, A, and B, when you actually release it out in the world, oh, it's beautiful. It's a ripped up, patched parachute that just looks like it shouldn't help your command pod at all. But it does, so it's actually useful. And finally, we have the KLM-01 ladder here, which is just, again, like with the solar panel, a recycled ladder that is bent and broken and still usable. So there you go. And those are all the parts for Honest Purple's land o junk And it's glorious. I really, really do love these sorts of things. It just, it puts a smile on my face to see all of these weird cobbled together parts that to me actually do seem very Kerbal but hey let's take a look at a quick little ship I made with these parts it's uh, using all 100% Honest Purple's Lando Junk parts and uh, yeah it's actually a pretty impressive little ship when I tested it earlier it got up to a hundred and sixty thousand meters with you know this little engine this little fuel tank and this whole little configuration so pretty decent we're not going to get it up this high because i just want to show off that hey the engine does work and also the amusing amusing parachute so let us head out to the launch pad and take a quick flight with our beautiful beautiful trash ship Oh, I love these things. And let's zoom in, get a good look at it. Of course, we need a thumbnail for the video, and uh, there it is. Perfect. And we'll launch in three, two, one, lift off. And yeah, it's an engine. It works. It's rocket. It flies. It's just made of junk. So let's actually throttle this thing down because, well, I don't want it to go very high. I want it to start falling back down to terra firma so we can release the parachute safely. And you can see the glory that is just the monstrosity of the whole thing, really. It's great. It's, it's wonderful. I really, really like it. But yeah, I, I, like I said, I always enjoy these sort of scrap junk part mods. We, we've seen two in the past uh, besides this one. And they always, they always make me smile. So a good addition, I think, to that same sort of realm of uh, junk. And as we're falling back down, we should be able to release the parachute safely now. There it is. And quite a long parachute. And not really hard to, or easy to see the junkiness of it uh, from this angle. I mean, you can see an obvious tear right there, but it really, really becomes clear. Oh, there we go. We can see through it right there. Perfect. Really becomes clear, though, once it does uh, deploy fully. And you can see just all the little patches and tears in it. It's it's very amusing. Again, like I said, the uh, stock interior in here for now. Hopefully we do get something more interesting in the future. I would just love to see, like, I don't, I don't know, like, broken coffee pots in there or something like that. It's it just, it would be fun and entertaining. So let us, uh, oh boy, let's actually speed up time a little bit here so we can actually get to the fully deployed parachute. And there we go. Bring it back down. And excellent. It has a tear there, tear there, more tears, gigantic tear, and a number of patch jobs around the thing that just amuses me greatly. So yes, if you'd like to check out this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do to have a good laugh, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.